Now, as we all know, the Super Bowl was on Sunday. The Kansas City Chiefs won. Taylor, there you are. Three Kansas City Chiefs fans here. Taylor Swift somehow got box seats. Usher's abs were on the outside of his shirt for some reason. It was great. And yesterday, they had a celebratory parade in Kansas City that tragically ended in gunfire. Now, there's still a lot we don't know about the situation. The good news is we do know one of the heroes that helped stop the shooting. Now, it wasn't Missouri's lax gun laws. It wasn't a good guy with a gun. It wasn't anybody bearing arms. It was just a guy with arms. Take a look at this video. It shows the moment that one of them was tackled by a couple of fans who were in the right place at the right time. One guy was hollering and saying, you know, stop him or catch him. And as I'm tackling him, I see his weapon. Bravo to this guy. Bravo. Bravo. Yes. Frankly, not, not just for stopping the shooter, but for executing a flawless tackle in front of the Super Bowl champions. <laughs> But Travis Kelsey is right there, and you're like, watch this form. <laughs> Look, maybe you, maybe you think we don't need gun control. But don't pretend there's any level of security that will prevent something like this from happening. There were more than 800 police officers there, and all they could do was react after it happened. Let me put this in football terms. America needs a defensive strategy that will stop a guy from getting the ball in the first place. Not just hope someone tackles him before he gets to the end zone. That's not a winning strategy, unless you're playing the Jets. <laughs> also, we need to limit the size of the ball. That ball is a weapon of war. The founders didn't anticipate the ball would be this big. I'm in too deep with this metaphor. I hear it now. <laughs> you get the idea. I'll tell you what's infuriating, though, is that we're not going to get to have an honest conversation about America's gun problem. Instead, we'll be having a conversation about America's parade problem. Should they have more security? Should they be smaller? Should they replace the confetti with Kevlar? Should the parade just be an email? It's not fun, but those are all the ideas we're allowed to have. Also, one thing I noticed about the media coverage around this is everyone saying, today was supposed to be a celebration, or the day started out filled with joy. Shouldn't every day be able to end without a mass shooting? Is our bar really that low? Like, even my shittiest day. My wife leaves me. The IRS audits me. I go to see Madam Webb. I mean, a shitty, shitty day. <laughs> even that day deserves to end without a shooting. Maybe, maybe I'm just a selfish, selfish optimist. You know what? Like the rest of the country, let's quickly move on from gun violence and talk about something else. As you know, Donald Trump is on trial in every jurisdiction in America. <laughs> One of the most important trials is down in Georgia, where he's accused of trying to overturn the election. And because this case is so important, it's crucial that the prosecution does everything above board and by the books, AKA, not this. After weeks of mounting questions, Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis acknowledging a romantic relationship with a special prosecutor she hired to lead her case against Donald Trump. Trump and his two co-defendants claim Willis benefited from the money her office paid Wade, saying he had taken her on lavish vacations. DA Willis could be disqualified from the case. So could her whole office, potentially. This could really bring the investigation back to square one. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Seriously? Trump might get off because these two were getting off. <laughs> the case might be derailed because these two were getting railed. <laughs> Are we f because they f <laughs> I, I can't believe a legal team's sexual appetite might destroy this case. Now I finally understand why Trump hired Rudy Giuliani as his lawyer. <laughs> no one's risking their case to see what he's packing. <laughs> but maybe... Maybe we should give Fonnie Willis the benefit of the doubt. Maybe, maybe she didn't know it was a conflict of interest to have sex with an employee. In 2020, Fonnie Willis was asked why Fulton County voters should elect her as DA instead of her opponent. They deserve a DA that won't have sex with his employees because they deserve a DA that won't put money in their own pocket. Ooh. <laughs> okay, that's tough, okay. Uh... <laughs> But to be fair, she kept her promise. She did not have sex with his employees, just 
hers. <laughs> I guess we call that progress. Now, one of the accusations against Fawny Willis is that after she hired her boyfriend, he kicked back money to her by taking her on lavish vacations. And today they questioned Nathan Wade about those vacations. And the answers didn't exactly roll off his tongue. I'm asking if you remember paying for a cabin six months ago in Tennessee. No. You remember booking a cabin? I booked lots of cabins. <laughs> Did you go to a cabin with Miss Willis ever? Ever. Ever. No. I don't care what you're answering. Anytime you pause that long, it's suspicious. <laughs> also, who books so many cabins they can't keep track of them? <laughs> you're either Davy Crockett or a serial killer. <laughs> so after today, things are not looking good for special prosecutor Nathan Wade. But he does have an option here. He sexed his way into this mess. He just might have to sex his way out. <laughs> if his loving is so good that a prosecutor is willing to break the rules for it, then he's got to sex everybody into breaking the rules for him. <laughs> sex the judge. Sex the jury. Sex the bailiff. If the clerk wants some sex, sex the clerk. <laughs> if Manu Raju is outside the courtroom, sex the Raju. <laughs> and if it comes down to it, he's going to have to sex Donald Trump. <laughs> If he's that good, it ought to do the trick. <laughs> Trump will walk out of that courtroom like, the case is rigged, but the D is fire. <laughs> As for Fonnie Willis, when she took the stand today, she denied any wrongdoing and also tried to bring some perspective to the day. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. Yes, thank you. Donald Trump is the one on trial which is why you should have been more careful. <laughs> this is possibly the most important trial in the country right now, and it could be completely derailed, not because of the evidence or the facts, but because two people got horny. So maybe the first thing we need is some new HR training. Hello. If you're watching this video, you're one of the 200,000 prosecutors currently working on a Donald Trump case. There's been some confusion lately over whether you should hire a person you're to prosecute the most important case in the nation. So we wanted to just take a moment to clarify. Don't. <laughs> Don't do that. Remember, there are over 330 million other Americans. You can have sex with any of them or hire them as a prosecutor, but not both. <laughs> it should be pretty obvious. <laughs> While we're at it, here's some other super obvious things to avoid that I can't believe I have to say out loud. Don't bribe the judge. Don't bribe the defendant. Don't burn down the courtroom. Don't join ISIS. Don't hire ISIS. Don't try to sell the judge drugs. Don't hire a stripper cop to be the bailiff. No, under any circumstances, toilet cams. Don't slurp up the defendant's bathwater. Don't recruit the jury into a multi-level marketing scheme. Don't sell tickets to the trial on StubHub. And finally, don't steal the judge's organs and sell them on the black market. By following these simple rules, you can maintain your integrity and not legally speaking, f this up, you idiot. Thank you, and good luck in court.